Hi class, so this um, lecture is going to be talking more in depth about CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. And at the end of the last chapter, um, you should have learned a lot about how style sheets work. Um, if you remember when I gave you the examples, at the beginning of the chapter, um, this is what we did. We we used an external style sheet and we made an H1 header that was styled. I'm going to continue on with that and do a few other things um, on this particular one. So, I'm on page 219 and we're going to talk about the following points of CSS. So. Tag selectors define properties for a specific HTML element. All content on the page with that tag is affected. For example, properties in the tag selector format every instance that is marked with A tags or all links on the page. So that's what we call tag selectors or global selectors. Okay. So a global selector or tag selector is talking about all of the p tags on the page, all of the h1 headers on the page, all of the tables on the page, um, all the a tags on the page. So when you go through and you create a page and you style all the a tags the same, that means all the links on the page are going to look the same unless they are within another tag, which you can choose um, to do. If you want to get more specific with something, like for example, one paragraph is going to look different than all the other paragraphs, um, you can do that. Okay, So this paragraph that I'm going to type here I'm going to go ahead and just copy it a few times and paste it. Okay, so I have four paragraphs. Okay, let's say that I want one of those paragraphs to look different than the others. I can do that by creating an ID selector for that specific paragraph. Okay. And an ID can only be applied one time per page. So let's say our second paragraph is the one that we want to look different. Okay. We are going, there's a couple ways you can create an ID selector. Um, you can go in the code, which is what I'm going to show you, and you can type P space ID equals and that's going to give it a name and so we can call that name whatever we want and we'll call it the special one okay you can call it whatever you want doesn't matter um, but if we give a paragraph an ID then when we go to our CSS document we can actually style just that ID and it won't affect all the paragraphs, it'll just affect that one that has the ID, okay? So let's say we call it special one, or actually instead of spelling out one, let's just do special one. Okay, so that one's um, an ID selector and it's been named with a specific ID in the HTML code and then the ID is applied as an attribute of the relevant tag so section ID headers the example they use in the book but we're doing a paragraph with the ID of special one okay so now if we go over to our CSS document and we want that one to have a specific style we will type the hashtag sign 
And the hashtag sign represents all ID selectors. Um, so however many you have created, it should bring up the list. And then you can type special one and then the curly brackets. And then inside of there, let's just say we want the text color to be a different color. Um, so let's go with lime green, right? Chartreuse. Okay. And then when you click up there and you look at it, the second paragraph has that color. Only the second paragraph, not all of the paragraphs. And then we could go in and make the paragraphs have specific attributes as well, which would apply to all the paragraphs. Let's give them a few different ones here. So let's make all the paragraphs dark blue and font family and font size 14 pixels. Okay, so let's say all of our paragraphs are going to look like that except for this one, which is going to be green. Okay, so the global selector whatever you have defined, whatever attributes you have defined in the global selector, so like P for paragraph, it's going to apply to all the paragraphs. Unless you have a more specific selector which has an ID or a class applied to it. Okay. Um, you can also have Oh, it's important to remember that each ID can only be applied once on a particular page, which means each element can be uniquely addressed. ID selector names begin with the hashtag character, such as hashtag header. So that's why we use the hashtag sign in front of the ID name. Okay. Um, you also have the option to do compound selectors, which are called descendant selectors. Um, so that's like if you have, let's go back to our code here. So let's put in a navigation section. So let's put in nav and then inside of nav, let's put list, or sorry, um, an unordered list. And then inside of that, let's put some list items. So we're just creating like a navigation or some page navigation. Okay, so this is my basic navigation. And then in this paragraph, I'm just going to do a regular link. paragraph I'm just going to type the word link okay and I'm gonna make all of these fake links so I'm gonna just give them the link of hashtag and then I'll show you what I mean about the styling So I have four links. One of them is inside a paragraph, so it's taking on the paragraph styling except for the fact that it's underlined. Okay. So my first link is styled like the paragraphs above it. My other three links don't have any specific styling applied to them yet. But let's say that I don't want to change 
this link, I just want to change these three. So if I just want to change those three, I can use a descendant selector or a compound selector in my CSS document. So I'm going to use a selector that says nav A. So only the links inside of the navigation. Okay. So I'm going to go over to my CSS document and I'm going to type nav space A and then my curly brackets. So all the links inside of the nav, I'm going to do text decoration none and I'm going to do color um, it's easier for me to just go pick some one of these colors but normally you would use a hex value pink and font size 22 pixels. Okay, now if I click up here, just the links in my nav section are going to look like that. Okay, so I've only selected the links inside the nav. Also, you can change the color or the size or whatever you want to change. You can change an attribute when somebody hovers over something. So most navigation menus have that option where it like changes color when you hover over a certain word. Um, so let's go ahead and add that as well. We'll have it change color when we hover over one of these. Okay. So in that case, we're going to do nav a colon hover. And that's called a pseudo class. So pseudo classes define properties for alternate states of an element, such as the a hover pseudo class link, which defines the appearance of a link when the mouse cursor hovers over it. So when we hover, we want the color to change to purple. Okay. So now if I go up here, it's only going to work in live view. But when I hover, it's going to change to purple. Okay. So all of this is done using my external style sheet. And I'm just adding on to it. I'm actually typing out the code. You can use the CSS designer if you want. I actually like typing out the code. Um, CSS properties and HTML in general have what we call a nested nature. And so what that means is there are tags nested within other tags, basically. So when you're talking about tags, um, you can think of it as like a parent-child relationship. So the parent of all the content on our page is called the body. And then H1, P, 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 all these paragraphs and the nav section are the children of that parent. Um, they're siblings to each other. So they're all on the same level as each other. But then once you start going inside more and nesting more, then you um, can think of it as like a parent-child relationship. So the inside of the nav tag, the child of that is the UL. And inside of that, the child of that is the LI. And the child of the LI is the A tag. So the A tag is nested inside of the LI tag inside of the ul tag instead of the nav tag inside of the body okay and that's what this tag selector is meant to help us figure out is how things are nested um so any any properties that you define 
using CSS for the body are going to automatically apply to all the children of that body unless it's overridden by some other specific attribute okay so the body tag is the parent of all the nested elements you can override those settings in a specific element by defining different properties for a specific ID, which is what we did with special one. And then if you define a different font size for, let's say, special one, the new font size will override the font size properties in the body tag. And the same font size is also inherited by its child. So if we put another paragraph inside a paragraph, it would be the same font size. Um, it would be inherited by the child, but not by the sibling. Okay. So just keep all that in mind as you're working with selectors. Um, you can also use classes, and classes can be applied to more than one thing. Um, so a class can be applied, this is on page 221, a class selector can be applied multiple times on a single page, unlike an ID selector, which can be applied only once on a page. And a class can be applied to different HTML tags on the same page. So you can apply the same class to an H2 element and an image element. Um, a class only applies to specific elements where you attach it, unlike a tag selector that affects all the same tagged elements on the page. And an H2 tag selector affects all H2 elements on the page. A class selector can be applied to only specific H2 elements without affecting other specific H2 elements. So, for example, let's just say we wanted this paragraph and this paragraph to be bigger than the other two. Okay, We could create a class for those two. Whereas with an ID, we can only apply it to one special item, okay? So let's go to our CSS and create a class. The way you do that is with a period, so you can call it large font or whatever you want, okay? And it's green. And so for the class large font, we want our font size to be 33 pixels. Okay, that's the only thing that we're going to change. You can choose whatever you want to change um, and then save it. And then go back to your code. And if you click on the first paragraph down in the properties panel, you can choose the class large font and it will override whatever the paragraph settings are and apply that large font size. And we can actually see in the code here that it's added p class equals large font. That class can be applied to any element on the page. Um, it doesn't just have to be a paragraph, but let's, let's go ahead and select another paragraph and change its class to large font. Okay, so then it's going to look like that. Um, we could even apply that to just this navigation if we wanted. And it would be larger than the rest. So, or sorry, not to that, um, to the actual A tag. So A class large font. Then it would make that text bigger. Okay. So if there's something that you want to go through and do to certain elements on the page, but not all of them, but you want to use it multiple times, you can create a class on page 221. Okay, so classes, IDs, descendant selectors, and pseudo classes. Okay, those are the four things we learned in this lesson. 
and now you'll get a chance to apply those um, by doing the Project 5 Music Festival site.